Hi everyone, this is Julianne Victoria of Through the Peacock's Eyes. Welcome to my channel. So in this vlog discussion video, I want to talk about death, my experience about death, how I view death, um, what I feel death is. Now I know this is not going to agree with what everyone else out there thinks or feels or knows or has experienced, um, but I just want to share my views on death with you guys. Okay. And part of that is, well, one, it's something I've been wanting to talk about for a while. And two, I've been doing my um, pregnancy, birth, labor experience videos. So I've done part one and two, and there'll be one or two more, maybe three. I don't know. We'll see when I record them. And if you watch those, or if you haven't, I'll explain here. I didn't know if I was going to make it. So throughout most of my pregnancy and my 33 hour labor, and I'll link them on screen towards the end here so you can check them out if you want to. Um, I didn't know if I was going to make it. Now I do believe that before we're born, we have chosen, I wanna say possible points of exit. I think there can be more than one it's not, oh, I'm going to live till this age, or I'm going to die this way. But I think we have points of exit at stages in our life where we can choose to go or choose to stay. And if any of you have like listened to, read about, or watched near-death experience videos, sometimes people will say, like they didn't want to come back or, you know, they had to make the choice or they were given the choice. So I think that is possible. But I do feel spiritually, psychically, that we do have points in our lives which can be our exits. And I think for most people, it's more than one. Um, and I do feel our souls You could say decide that, but the soul doesn't think like our brains do, right? But the soul decides that before it enters into the body. And that's where looking at, you know, into astrology, you can't definitively say someone's going to die at this point in their life. You may see where there's a lot of energy on, say, the eighth house of death or on the 12th house towards the ascendant. You know, there's various ways to look at it where, wow, that might be a really challenging time. That may be an exit point, but it's not, it's not, again, not set in stone. So I do feel like we have exit points. So I felt my pregnancy, the labor was a possible exit point. And for those who watched that video, for those who haven't watched that video, occasionally I would pull my tarot cards. I didn't do it a whole lot. Um, because anything and everything, even visual things, made me nauseous. Um, but I often would get the Hanged Man, along with the Death card, the Ten of Swords. And I'm actually going to make a Death in Tarot video soon. Um, probably really soon after this one. Um, which can all see, be seen, of course, as Death cards. And, but I would get the Strength card too, telling me I have the Strength. So I knew, of course, having a baby is going to transform your life because death, death is often referred to as transformation. Um, but with the hanged man, that was sort of like the glitch. Like I had to surrender to the possibility. I had to surrender, not fight, not, you know, get pissed off or angry about it. Honestly, I didn't have the energy for that, so I couldn't have. Um, but I had to just surrender to what I was doing. And all I could really do for the most part was grow a baby. Most days, you know, if I had the energy to take a shower, that was my big thing for the day. Once in a while, you know, once or twice a week, maybe three times a week, I could get out of the house. I could do a prenatal yoga class, the water class or walk the dogs, but that would wipe me out for a couple of days. And even just checking the mail some days was like my big activity. Um, so I, I had to, I mean, I was kind of forced to surrender to the experience. So I just focused on growing the baby, knowing that I might not make it. And that surrender, that acceptance of that possibility, it's so hard to explain. Like I was just very much at peace. 
but I did ask. I asked a God. I said, you know, I, I accept this if this is really, you know, what's to be. But I would prefer if I had a choice to guide my baby in the physical rather than just from spirit. But I knew I would be able to guide her from spirit too. So that just brought, I had a sense of peace. And Natalie over at Sanskrit Blue, she's a death doula or end of life doula. Um, she just did a video about death and being an empath or a title, something like that. I'll link that on screen here too for you to watch. Um, and she said something along those lines, working with people who are dying, there's just, there's this sense of peace or you, or she said something like they, they really live from their highest self. And that's how I felt. Like I was like, okay, my job, my purpose right now is to grow this baby as healthy and as best I can. And, you know, I told her, I said this in, the, I think the first video, take whatever you can. If I survive, I will recover. It's been a long recovery. That's the next video or maybe the second one after this one. Um, but yeah, I have recovered. It's been almost two years, over a year and a half. Still a little recovery going. But that was my face to face with death. I had one other time where I had to face that I might die. One other time that I'm positively sure I might have had to face death at that moment. So it was when I was in college, um, it was over 20 years ago. I was with a friend from high school. We were driving back home to San Francisco from school. Um, we were, we passed the toll booths on the Bay Bridge and it's like, I don't know, it's like 20 lanes. It's a whole bunch of lanes that kind of converge down into, I don't know, eight to go across the bridge. And so all these cars coming together and he swerved because someone was merging in. Sometimes it's like three lanes merge at once. It's crazy. Um, he swerved. We like swerved on one side. We swerved on the other side. We swerved and then we spun around a few times, went across a few lanes of traffic, really heavy traffic and hit the side rail. I was surprised we hit nobody. I was, everything was very slow motion high probability we were going to crash and either be horribly mangled, tossed off the bridge or dead. And I remember in that moment bracing myself <laughs> as we're like swerving, swerving, spinning, spinning, going across lanes of traffic, thinking, I guess I'm okay if I die now. Total acceptance. So just from those two experiences, and just my spiritual beliefs and practices and a whole bunch of other stuff. I know death is not something to be afraid of. Yes, we think, oh yeah, I want to keep living because I want to do this and I want to do that. But those are really just the superficial things. And I do believe, you know, our souls live on. The physical body ends, but our souls live on whether you believe in reincarnation or, you know, the soul goes to heaven or some other realm. So it's not the end. So it's not anything to be feared. The fear is losing the physical material when people fear death. The fear of not being able to see your loved ones, which you can. When you're in spirit, you can be anywhere. Yeah, so that's my personal, personal, personal experience. Now, when I was a child, a small child, um, the first time I knew someone who died was when I was five, year old, five years old, and that was my grandmother, my dad's mother. And I remember when she died and my parents telling me, I don't remember the actual conversation, but I remember thinking how happy I was for her because she had been suffering from lymphoma, from cancer, she eventually caught pneumonia, which is not uncommon, and passed away. And I remember thinking how happy I was for her because I thought, well, now she's at peace. Now she's at peace. And I think I could feel her energy around. At five years old, I don't think I could have like explained it that way. But just thinking back, yeah, I knew she was okay. And so just that early experience of death and being 
like understanding of it, not worried about it, knowing she was at peace. Like I never had this sense of, oh, you should fear death. And I could see that like the sadness, the grief was for the people who would miss her. It wasn't grief because she's now dead and distraught. No, she was at peace. And so I always had this sense of, you know, death is okay. When, when you leave the physical form, you also leave behind those fears and those worries. You leave behind the struggles of the physical and material life. You are at peace. And so, yeah, family members dying, yes, it's sad, you know, you miss them. You know, and, and that's not to make light of grief, because grief can be quite a struggle that many people have to understand and work with and feel. You should feel your grief, not, not suppress it. But for those who have passed on, they're okay. They're always okay. And of course, you know, being sensitive to spirits. I mean, I guess you could call me a medium, but I don't do medium work. I don't contact spirits for people. Um, but you know, I grew up in a haunted house and grandparents spirits around my mom picked up on her, you know, her, her parent, her father and so on. Um, I, I knew they were okay. So I never had this fear or worry of death. Yeah. What else do I want to say about death? Well, my grandmother, she actually, so talking about like points of exit, when she was probably in her late 70s, yeah, or so, I don't know, I was a teenager, I think. She, my, well, my grandmother's very psychic. I mean, this is like both sides, both grandmother's sides, like there's Celtic shaman energy <laughs> or Celtic witch, if you want to call it that, healer energy that comes through. Um, so this grandmother is the one who lived longer, obviously, not the one who passed when I was five. Um, she, she would talk about her <laughs> psychic experiences, you know, after grocery shopping, having some tea, sitting around the table telling stories. Um, but she told us, one sec, Okay, so my grandmother was telling us this story. It was really a dream. She, what she thought was a dream, like that night before, maybe a couple nights before. And she dreamt she was walking towards a very bright white light, sort of your typical near death experience story, if you read a lot about it or quite a few, but it's not uncommon to be walking towards a white light. She said she was dreaming, she was walking towards the white light. She said it was so bright, like brighter than anything she'd ever seen. And she kept walking and then she saw my uncle, um, who was her sister's husband there and he, he was passed on. He was saying, go back, go back. You're not supposed to be here. Go back, I'm getting goosebumps as I say this. He kept telling, go back, go back. You're not supposed to be here. And so I think that was like, a possible exit point but for some reason it was like no she had to experience more and she was told to go back and I mean I guess you can wonder like what if she didn't listen to him and kept walking you know that might have been when she passed but because he told her to go back she came back and she lived like another 20 years so <laughs> she lived until she was 90 so um until her early 90 91 I guess she was, you know, early 70s when she had this dream. So, yeah, so she, you know, we talked about these things and, you know, it wasn't scary. And she knew that those who had passed on were around. Because even her husband, my grandfather, she would like fall asleep on the bed <clears throat> and she'd wake up. So I don't know if she was really awake. I think she was awake because she said that she was felt pretty, she was pretty sharp. So if she was awake, felt she was awake, she was awake probably. And she'd wake up and see my grandfather sitting on the chair like he would when they would sit and watch TV together in the evening. And she would, that would happen often. So my, my grandfather was still there with her after he had passed on, you know, 
watching over her, just keeping her company, whether she was fully aware of it all the time or not. But there were several times when she'd say he was there. So, you know, just from my experiences, family experiences, it's like it affirms that, you know, when we die, it's not poof, nothing. Our souls live on. And it's really the fear of death comes from, one, thinking, poof, there's nothing beyond it. Or if you believe there's no soul, then yeah, poof, there's nothing beyond it. Or from not being able to cling and hold on to and grasp onto the material and physical things, which can include relationships in that sense, clinging to those attachments, which ideally you want to release at some point before. I think most people do. I think most people come to peace about things as they approach death. Um, and those who don't, those who just clutch so tightly or possibly died suddenly, those are the souls that can, you know, quote unquote, haunt a place, not just appear as family members, but like the haunting, um, because they're distraught and they need, they need assistance to go to that light so that they can unattach from this physical realm and then visit it, you know, loved ones if they want, instead of being tied to it. Now, I also experienced death. Well, obviously, I've had many animals die. So that was, we had tons of animals as a kid. I've had animals my whole life. And so just, you know, accepting death through that, I think is really helpful for children to understand, you know, as long as the parents don't freak out about it too just like you know it's the cycle of life and from death comes new life <clears throat> i think it's helpful for children to to experience death in some way and animals because they live shorter lives is i think a, a helpful tool of course it depends on the parents and the caretakers and all that but my mother had alzheimer's and at the time when I moved back to San Francisco in uh, 2012, end of 2012, I, well, um, it wasn't clear how bad her Alzheimer's had gotten until I was there and I could observe it. I think my dad um, couldn't see it, didn't want to see it, which is not uncommon for the spouse um, but it was really bad. And even though I moved back there from my own transformation, I also knew part of my transformation was about family healing and ancestral healing. And so I ended up being her main caretaker um, because I happened to be there. And I watched, I watched her her dwindle. I mean, it's way more complicated than this. So I'm trying to like simplify it. So I'm not talking for hours and hours, but I watched her dwindle, her mind dwindle. And as a healer, especially an energy healer, I could see, I could feel that in cases like Alzheimer's or possibly other forms of dementia, but I don't have firsthand experience, but I could see that it was like a slow passing of her soul out of her body. And I think that might happen if someone really doesn't want to leave or they're clinging to the material physical. Of course, there's the element that I believe, you know, our souls kind of choose exit points and possible ways that we pass. So some of it was part of her soul's necessary experience. But I, I, at least from her case, Alzheimer's is just a slow process of the soul leaving the body. Because to the soul, to the realm of spirit, they don't go by time like we do. Time is determined by the sun, the moon, and the stars, by the physical things. Time as we know it doesn't exist in different dimensions or you know, beyond the physical. So that's what I could see. And towards the end, 
she had had a couple of strokes and so she couldn't move very well and it's really only the last few months she was in a home a caretaker home my i felt like my purpose was to help piece together the pieces of her soul basically doing some soul retrieval in as gentle a way as possible so that her soul could pass completely and I think part of her slow passing or her body, her, her soul taking on the experience of Alzheimer's to leave was because she had a very fractured soul. And by helping those pieces come together and become whole, her soul could leave more easily. And so I think that helped her to pass freely Yeah. So I do feel I helped my mother pass in peace. Yeah. Pass more peacefully. And it's interesting because she actually passed away on my birthday. And so she did appear to me after she had passed or actually in two ways one so after we got the call that she had passed the phone rang again and i answered the phone and it like i answered it right away right and all i heard was a voice it was like an automated voice but all it said was goodbye and I, I, I knew that was my mom calling, saying goodbye. And then later, not too long after that, I walked downstairs and some of the, the doors have glass panels. It's an old Victorian, so it has like really interesting doors. Um, and I saw her reflection or I saw her image in the glass panels. And it was an image of her when she was like in her 30s, which... You'll often hear that, you know, when family members appear, they, they'll appear, you know, when they're younger or when they felt like they were at their prime or <laughs> looked their best even. Um, so she appeared and I knew she was just saying thank you and goodbye. So I feel like that was my affirmation that I was able to help her pass more peacefully without her soul struggling and distraught still from whatever ways it had been fractured so i was happy to help her there um so yeah those are my experiences with death um some of them <laughs> my views on death and do check out natalie's video on death and being an empath um then she's an end of end of life doula and i've, I've often thought about going that route as a healer I may still do it someday um, because yeah, it doesn't scare me and I feel like I could help comfort other people in some way. And sort of like, you know, being there for my mom and animals who have passed, you know, I've, I've had, you know, dogs that I've had to help put down because they were just at the end and you don't want them to just lie there and suffer. Um, usually if they have cancer or, you know, something like that. Um, I do feel like I can help those who are struggling with death, especially at the end. So I don't know. I may take that route sometime. <clears throat> but that is my death video. I kind of feel like there was more I wanted to say, but I think that is it. Just a little discussion on death. You get to little, know a little bit more about me there. Um, I will do a death in tarot video. I might actually try to pop it in today. I'm feeling lots of energy for extra videos besides client videos. Um, I have a very flexible schedule today because there's no like Skype sessions. It's just all recordings. So yeah, maybe I'll do death and tarot very soon. So thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, sharing, share this with someone whom you feel might just need some understanding, a little comfort about death. Um, be, you know, be discerning though. And yeah, 
I will see you back here soon.